this is a stack of honey that we've just harvested. Uh, we moved the honey in here to make it nice and warm so it flows well. But I want to talk to you today about moisture in honey and some ways to deal with it. We'll show you how we deal with high moisture honey and uh, some of these uh, principles can be adapted in, in different ways at your, in your own locations. So the first thing we do when we harvest honey in the fall of the year is we cross pile the boxes. So we separate the boxes and we stack them over in a way that the air can flow through from top to bottom on the supers. In the fall of the year, we're harvesting all the boxes, whether they're full or not. And uh, so that some of these will be only partially full and only partially ripe. The summer it's a little bit different. We're able to be a bit more selective about what we take off. And, we, and the air temperature is warmer and the humidity is such that we typically don't have high moisture. Uh, content in the honey falls a bit different. This is when we can have a problem with high moisture honey. So we cross file the boxes to get the air moving through. Uh, and then we are able to get that moisture level down with the air moving through in a warm room. We have a really good sized fan here that blows that air th through these stacks so that it moves up and through the supers. If it's really high moisture honey, we'll run a dehumidifier as well. Just looking at this box here, the outside frames, the moisture level will be higher. Uh, we use bee escapes on our colony, so these supers are, don't have any bees in them for a day or so when we use the bee escape. If honey evaporates or nectar evaporates in here, some of it can, can condense and it would condense more so on the outside than the inside. And the bees tend to have the honey riper in the middle anyway. So if we're to test the moisture with uh, a refractometer, uh, this would be higher than the honey in here. This could even be as high as 20% or more, and the middle might be 16 or so. Uh, what we're shooting for is an average of 17.8% moisture or less. If it's lower than that, it will not ferment. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, if this honey sits here for any length of time uh, and that high moisture honey and outside frames, they can ferment in the box. Uh, so we're really careful to make sure we don't extract frames that could have fermentation. Uh, we look for things like little bubbles in the, in the honey. Uh, we, if the honey is capped, even capped honey can ferment, but in capped honey you'll see some honey leaking out and running down on the surface of the comb. So visually we can see fermentation, but we can also typically smell it and for sure taste it. So we smell, we taste, we look, and uh, try and make sure we don't get any frames extracted that have fermentation. Even just a few frames can put the flavor of the honey off, you can taste that fermentation. So we'll just set that box down there. And uh, one way we like to do things is we'll get the honey down to where we think it's good, then we'll extract uh, several loads in our extractor and then test the moisture level after. That way we're getting an average moisture content. We can't figure out where the moisture level is by testing frames. We have to extract some honey first. Uh, once we've done that and the moisture level looks good in the extracted honey, then we carry on. But if it's not good, we pause, we run the dehumidifier longer, we run the fans longer, and we dry that honey down. And uh, honey that's in the comb has a lot of surface area to it. So any of those open cells there, uh, all that surface is exposed and it can dry down with the moving of the dry air that's moving through it. Once honey is extracted and it's inside a jar, there's, very, there's almost nothing you can do to reduce the moisture level. So you have to do it at this stage. Just a few tips that work for us. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you another time.